Ja myślę, że te filmy w gruncie rzeczy, wszystkie, które robię, są także o tym, że trzeba się koniecznie otworzyć, że trzeba się koniecznie skomunikować na innym piętrze niż tylko wymiana informacji na temat jakości wina, ceny samochodów i tak dalej. Ceny mieszkań i możliwości najlepszego ulokowania pieniędzy w banku. Few filmmakers could make a trilogy based around the French tricolore's colors and political ideals of liberty, equality and fraternity, declare these films determinedly apolitical and still be hailed as cultural triumphs. Krzysztof Kislowski could. When the Polish auteur released in quick succession between September 1993 and May 1994 at major European film festivals, three colors blue, white, and red, they were widely and immediately seen as masterpieces, the epitome of modern cinematic art. Kishlovsky announced his retirement at Red's Cannes premiere, so when he tragically and prematurely died in 1996, aged just 53, the trilogy accrued even more significance as a final personal and artistic statement. This was a filmmaker much admired for his documentary background, and earlier, socially and politically conscious work. Yet who later deliberately went in another direction. I w ten sposób zacząłem rozumieć, jak bardzo wiele sfer życia wymyka się filmowi dokumentalnemu. W związku z tym oczywiście coraz w natury rzeczy, coraz to bardziej przenosiłem się ze sfery powiedzmy społecznej, czy politycznej także, która łatwo podlega dokumentowi, do sfery wydarzeń pomiędzy ludźmi, a ostatnio mam wrażenie, że robię coraz bardziej filmy o tym, co właściwie ludzie mają w środku, o tym, czego właściwie nie pokazują na zewnątrz nikomu. In this context then, dealing with stories framed by revolutionary principles is something important, namely external socio-cultural environments that can govern those innermost thoughts now absent. A quarter century on, in a Europe both more interconnected and at odds with itself, is Kishlovsky's trilogy still a central text through which to read the modern world? Or rather, pretty colorings in the margins? Kishlovsky was always up front that the three colors concept was just a pretext. Yet he and his regular co-writer Krzysztof Piaszewicz explored these themes of liberty, equality and fraternity with their habitual intelligence, insight and irony. Blue is a deep dive into grief, the freedom from all emotional ties sought by a woman who loses her husband and young child in a car accident, and how the past will not let her go and ultimately help reconcile her sorrow through the healing power of creation and love. White is a more naturalistic black comedy about a dysfunctional marriage and, through its hapless Polish expat protagonist, a satire on Kishlovsky's homeland adapting to life post-communism and how these two unions, personal and national, might find a new twisted equilibrium. Red, the most expansive and inquisitive of the three, focuses on the unusual friendship between a compassionate young Swiss model and a cynical, voyeuristic old judge. It delves into a favorite Kishlovsky theme, blind chance and fate, and how the characters' relationships may have wider, more intangible repercussions. As pure filmmaking, it's easy to understand why the films were so celebrated individually and then as a unified work. While there are brief moments in blue and white, where the characters unwittingly intersect. It's only in Red's trilogy-capping coda that the protagonists of all three films are finally brought together, miraculous survivors of a major disaster. Though each features different, outstanding casts, takes place predominantly in different European countries, is shot by a different cinematographer, and unfolds with a different tone and tempo, Kishlovsky and Piaszewicz were careful to layer in connective links and motifs. Most obvious are the respective titular color palettes. In blue, Julie's unbidden visitations by past memories are announced with washes of blue overwhelming both her and the screen. 
white uses its signifier more sparingly and less self-consciously, whereas red heightens the concept to a whole other level. This is no mere decoration, but rather colour expressing a sensual state of consciousness. The blue of icy depression and numbed solipsism. A bleaching white for sardonic purity and possible clean slate. A red alive with the warmth of shared intimacy or warning of imminent danger. One should note though that this wasn't new for Kishlovsky. His previous film, The Double Life of Veronique, employed a similar colour coding with its oneric, almost in utero-like amber palette. In fact, the film also contains the forerunner to one of the trilogy's key connective scenes. In blue, Julie is too lost in her own grief to notice an elderly person labouring to make a bottle bank deposit. White's destitute Carol does see and grimly seems to identify with a fellow struggler. Only Valentine in red goes to offer assistance, and this progression across the films is key to Kishlovsky's concept of personal responsibility. Oczywiście my jesteśmy, każdy z nas jest odpowiedzialny za siebie samego i za własne życie. To jest całkiem jasne. Ale ja myślę, że jest też odpowiedzialność inna. To jest odpowiedzialność, której w istocie nie mamy pojęcia, że w ogóle istnieje. To jest odpowiedzialność za innych ludzi. Za innych ludzi, których spotykamy lub których nawet nie spotykamy. Ja głęboko wierzę w to, że, że w sposób, w jaki żyjemy, w sposób, w jaki postępujemy, ma wpływ na ludzi wokół nas. Wszystko jedno, czy ich znamy, czy nie. Look closely at Kishlovsky's entire career and this shifting between the material and immaterial, physical and metaphysical world has always been there. His very first short, The Tram, deals with a chance encounter between two young people and an almost existential longing for connection. Even his 10-part television masterpiece, The Decalogue, for all that it centers on the inhabitants of a Warsaw tenement, is as much, if not more, concerned with their interior lives as the bleak world around them. 1989's collapse of the Soviet Empire and Poland's post-communist era no doubt influenced Kishlovsky's refocus away from overt political statements. Perhaps the embodiment of this new emphasis is the crucial scene in the double life of Veronique, where the two Veroniques fleetingly come face to face, and political unrest is backdrop to personal revelation. Yet it still frames the scene. Blue echoes even expands on this. Julie's husband was a famous composer commissioned to write a symphony for the European Union, although perhaps she herself wrote the music. Completing the score is a significant part of her emotional rehabilitation. But given the music could have had any basis, this choice is telling. Similarly, white and red's inter-country relationships are beautifully individualized, yet can easily evoke issues around growing European convergence, conflict and compromise. And listening to Kishlovsky's co-writer, Krzysztof Piaszewicz, these suggestions are no coincidence. Daje osiągnąć na przykład cała idea Unii Europejskiej. Być może to jest najwspanialsza myśl polityczna w historii setek albo tysięcy lat w tym miejscu na Ziemi. Myśmy chcieli po prostu zwrócić się do ludzi żeby porozmawiać o otaczających ich świecie. Kishlovsky's style of address had evolved over time, but then so had the world around him. He said, Neon, Europa, człowiek. Such unions and alliances in the global village all make us increasingly dependent on vast numbers of strangers in ever more imperceptible, even inscrutable ways. How do you know this music? I invent all sorts of things. 
The entire trilogy, particularly their endings, stressing powerful, often intuitive communion and connection, affirms Kishlovsky's belief in mutual responsibility. And in Red's climactic Deus Ex Machina finale, Kishlovsky is firmly focused on the Deus, or at least a kind of metaphysical invocation, rather than the physical world's machina. Political ideas and ideals refracted through the personal. The European Union's official motto is United in Diversity. At its most essential level, trying to capture on film the inner lives of the people who make up any social and therefore political entity, it also seems an apt description for the ever-searching mission of Krzysztof Kislowski's cinema. <laughs>